All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Admin Bar, the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, and joining me today live on Facebook, as uh, as we used to be, uh, my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going pretty good. Uh, it's, it's definitely different being live again. Um, I think it's cool. I like it. Uh, we're going to definitely see a little bit more stumbling on words, possibly. We'll see. I don't know. I don't but, know. We'll uh, probably no, things, are, things are good. I woke up a couple of days ago and that's always good. That's a good ground. start. What? Waking up is a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Typically, I start my day by waking up. Um, but I did uh, because it's been like 30 degrees out um, outside during the, the evenings and, and nighttime. Uh, I, I took out all the air conditioners from my office, my bedroom, like all that. And I must have done that far too early because I am sitting in my office sweating like crazy right now. So I'll be putting that back in. Yeah, I don't understand your weather. It is weird. So uh, who went first last time? I think you did. So today I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take charge here. If you haven't been listening to the podcast here recently, uh, we've been doing a bit of a different format where Matt and I both bring a topic to the table that neither one of us have discussed with each other. And uh, we discuss it uh, here and, and see what each other has to say about it. So we will kick that off right now. So my, uh, my topic is actually something I kind of previewed a little bit in the group earlier this week. I posted a post, I guess it was on Monday. It feels like in COVID days, it was at least a month ago, uh, but it was on Monday. And I just put in the post WebP thoughts uh, because I started experimenting a bunch with WebP image formats. Um, I don't know a ton about it, but I just so happened to be like I don't know, I found a YouTube video or something and they were talking about it and they were showing like which browsers it was compatible on and which ones it wasn't. And I looked at the date of the video and the, the video was pretty out of date. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go check on this. So it looks like it's fairly well, you know, uh, adopted by all the browsers now. So I thought, okay, well now is probably a good time to start looking at, you know, how much does this save me? So typically when I'm building websites. I have Photoshop open, I have Illustrator open, and I'm creating SVGs in Illustrator and, you know, uh, sizing images and stuff in Photoshop just because it's the tools I'm used to. Mm -hmm. um, but Photoshop wouldn't open nor save a WebP image. Nope. So I was like, okay, well, this doesn't really help me. So I found some plugin. They looked like there were several of them. I found one, uh, downloaded it, stuck it in Photoshop, seems to open and save WebP. Uh, fine now. So I started playing with like some experiments of just seeing, you know, open up a, an original image off of my camera, which is, you know, a huge raw file uh, and save it as a PNG, a JPEG and a WebP and kind of tell the difference. So it's kind of hard to get a exact one for one comparison on all these because there's different quality settings on all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I never could figure out a way to say, okay, like here's the results of my testing. Here's the best way to do it. Uh, because there was just too many variations in all of them. There was no way to compare apples to apples. So uh, I started kind of playing with, uh, in, in the plugin I downloaded for Photoshop, there was like a slider for qu image quality. So it goes from like 0% to 100%. So I started kind of playing with that and seeing how it was affecting the image and then how that was affecting the image size. Um, and honestly, I could get a little bit better out of the WebP than I could a JPEG, but not a whole lot. Um, certainly not enough to fiddle with all this if I have to do it manually and definitely not to go back and redo images that I've saved as JPEGs, right? Right. Um, one thing I did really like, I don't know how much time you've spent with WebP images, but one thing I did really like is it seems like when it when you reduce the quality, instead of pixelating it like a JPEG, it starts smoothing it. So like on landscape photos, product photos, there's there's several things I thought, okay, this looks really nice because it just smooths everything out mm -hmm. instead of making it pixelated. But on like pictures of humans and pictures of skin, it gives it that like real posterized plasticky look. You know, so if you start uh, messing with those sliders too much or downgrading the quality, everything starts looking really plasticky. So that wasn't, you know, that's not always ideal, right? So, you know, I, when I posted this in the group, I started uh, 
you know, a bunch of people responded. There's 61 comments here. We'll put a link in the show notes to it. Um, but a lot of people basically saying the only way they're using it is like through a CDN or through short pixel or something that's automatically generating WebP format rather than going to the hassle of creating WebP. Um, yeah, the only experience that I have with it is through short pixel and uh, running it through that way. And I remember probably towards the beginning of this year, late last year, like right after they uh, they, they added that, that addition, um, I tried it out and it just, it didn't work quite right. Like, you know, some of the, some of the images just wouldn't load or they were loading funky. Um, so I kind of gave up on it for a little bit and I went back probably last month and ticked the boxes again on my site and it worked flawlessly. So I don't know if that was yeah. something that I did or if they were still like, you know, ironing out some kinks. Uh, right. So, so when I started looking in short pixel, cause I have, I bought, I stacked way too many app sumo codes. I have like way too many credits. on you and me both. Yeah. Uh, so when I, when I checked the box, I got it pulled up here just so I could go through it. So there's, there's a check box that says, uh, also create web P versions of the images for free. So you can click that. And I guess as it, as you're uploading images, it'll create a web P version. I didn't see in even going back and trying to rebulk process everything that it was going back to media that was already uploaded and adding a WebP. Maybe it just takes longer and I wasn't patient enough, mm -hmm. uh, but it was doing it automatically for new images. But when you click that box, there's another box that shows up that says deliver the WebP versions of the images on the front end. So I guess creating them, but not showing them would be fairly pointless. Right. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly why you have two different tick boxes for that. But then when you click that, to deliver them, it gives you more options. And so uh, there's one using the picture tag syntax, um, which is the first option it gives you. And then another option uh, without altering the page code via HT access. Um, so I picked the using picture tag syntax. And when you do that, it gives you a big warning dialog. Now it won't pop up because I've probably already done it. Um, but yeah, a, a warning. Yeah, a warning pops up and says, you know, this this alters the structure of the HTML. In some rare cases, this can lead to CSS and JavaScript inconsistencies. Hmm. Uh, so it was just like, click this, then gives you more options, then gives you more, and then a warning. And I'm like, holy shit, this is like a lot of work to just serve an image that's marginally better sometimes, you know? Right, uh, right. But I went ahead and went through with it just to see what it would do. I noticed some problems, like the pictures started working. Uh, I had clear cache and stuff like that. Started serving the um, the WebP images. They were marginally smaller than the JPEGs I had in there. Um, but I noticed in some things, like I have a website where on the front page, I have like a gallery slider that slides through images and I don't have all those images saved to the same aspect ratio. So uh, the gallery slider is using CSS to render them all the same size, right. but with the WebP format, it's not doing that. So some are like skinny and some are tall and some are fat and some are long. And uh, so I had to just turn it off on that site because I'll have to go back and redo the images. But uh, that led me yesterday, God, this is a lot of talking. Uh, that led me yesterday to, I think it was yesterday, I, I messaged you because I was playing with all the different quality settings for JPEGs inside Photoshop. So mm -hmm. if you use Photoshop, you'll be familiar with this. If you're not, when you go to save out a JPEG in Photoshop, um, there's a little dialog box that comes up. I'm gonna do it here so I'm not, um, not lying. Um, there's a little dialog box that comes up that says JPEG options, and it gives you image options for quality. And it's a little slider that goes between zero and 12. Um, so usually just, I don't know why I picked nine at one point in my life as this is what I'm going to use. And I almost always save it as nine. Well, it's probably uh, because when you, when you looked at the dialog box, I think like as you're sliding it, it's going to be like best, better, good. And you're like, well, good is probably good enough or better at, you know, at right. nine. I think it's, so yeah. there's, there's low, medium, high and maximum and nine is the highest setting on high, but it's off of maximum. So that's probably exactly why I picked a nine. So I started experimenting. I'm like, okay, well, I can at least test this. So I took the same image and I saved it out at all of the different quality um, settings on the slider from zero to 12. And I measured, uh, you know, how I looked to see how big all those files were. And from, 
you know, the setting at zero was like 35 kilobytes and the setting at large was like 900 or something. So it was like a huge difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And then I started kind of just filtering through all these images to see where I started noticing like a real downgrade in image quality. Uh, and it was between three and four. Now I didn't do this on a bunch of images. It's totally going to depend on what the image is of and how sharp it needs to be. I took an image of keys sitting on my desk, um, but like the little key fob, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here, but the key fob has like a lot of texture to it, right? So I started paying attention kind of to that. And really between three and four, I noticed a difference. So I started saving all these images out at the quality size four instead of nine. And it's about 25% of the size as it was when I was saving out as nine. So uh, rather than fool with WebP, I think I'm just gonna get in a better habit of making sure I one, size the images appropriately for the website. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and huge. Two, yeah, that's definitely huge. And then to save it out at quality four seemed to be a pretty good starting place for me. You know, obviously you have to test what the images. So it's a lot of thinking about images lately. Yeah, I, I got to say that, like, I haven't played around with WebP that much. I have on my personal sites just, uh, like, you know, because if they go down, whatever. It's not a client site. Um, but I do like using them just because they're new. And I kind of feel like it, it's in the right direction if I start using them, get used to them and all that. Um, right. The one thing that I find, like, super annoying about WebP is when you're Google searching, like, if I just need, like, a logo or a brand something and I, I just... I just need to Google search, uh, image search that, like that file. Every time I, uh, I like, especially recently, every time I copy one to my desktop, it's like, oh, it's WebP. I can't, I can't use it because typically I'm downloading like a brand's logo, um, and it's like an affiliate of the client that I'm working working with. Right. So they don't necessarily have access to these logos. I've got to go hunt them down, and I most likely need to change the colors or at least like you know edit them a little bit to, to match the site. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of annoying that you can't like copy, like, like you can't use them like you, uh, you would a JPEG or anything in Photoshop. So that came, that came up in this thread a couple times, people bitching about, uh, their memes coming up in, in WebP and not being able to save memes. <laughs> so I didn't try it on my phone. I guess that's something else to look at is, I didn't really examine any of this from an actual mobile device. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how much different it works there. I guess for me, biggest thing for me, takeaway wise on this was, yeah, kind of cool, saves a little bit of space, but not nearly enough space to like worry about the hassle of either reprocessing images or finding those instances where the CSS or JavaScript doesn't uh, compute well with the web people. Like, I'm just going to save stuff as a JPEG. Like, Default, if it doesn't have transparency, it's a JPEG. If it does, it's a PNG and go from there. Yeah. So just for me, it, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Yeah. And I think that sizing correctly, like, I mean, that alone, it's it's not a practice that I think a lot of people um, really like take care to, to do. Usually it's just like, oh, I've got this photo. I'm going to throw it in where it goes and, you know, CSS will resize it. It's fine. Um, but when you do start looking at that and you do start uh, like actually making sure that the, you know, the, the, the photo is going to fit whatever uh, container it's in, um, that's going to do you like, a ton of good. Yeah, I wonder, I know we've gone a while on this subject, but I think this is worth exploring. I wonder what your process is like for doing that, right? So I'm typically, if I was building a design out in Figma or or a design software, I would be able to tell exactly what those sizes are before I ever upload them to WordPress. Mm -hmm. But typically I'm designing in Elementor, so I really don't know how I'm going to lay things out until I've laid them out. So my process has basically been, leave images just the way I have them, whatever size they are, as long as it's not ridiculous, 4,000 pixels wide or something. Right. Uh, leave them whatever size they are, do all my design work. And then when I'm done and happy with it, I'll go back and reprocess all the images, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I really don't know uh, a better way, if you're going to design in the browser, a better way of doing it. Yeah. And I mean, that's going to, that's going to lead a lot of people to say, well, don't do that. Like design yeah, it first and then, and then, you know, put it up online. Um, but I do the same thing. I design in the browser most of the time, um, rather than like, you know, any, any separate 
separate thing. So I, my process is pretty much the same. I'd love to hear like what other people do. Yeah. The other thing I've done is I've been really good about making sure like the outermost container of the website is set to 1920. So I don't have any images that run like infinitely full width, like mm -hmm. at 1920, they're going to stop. And at least that gives me you know, I know none of my images need to be more than 1920. And if they're going to take up half the screen, I can just do the math at least fairly easy and get, get kind of a general idea of what size I need to size things. But I, I shared yesterday, like a GT metrics report of one of my websites that was loading in a second. And I think most of the, I mean, I have caching on there and stuff, uh, but nothing super advanced. It's check boxes inside Breeze and it's mm -hmm. sitting on a Cloudways server with a bunch of other websites. So nothing really special to it other than I've taken the extra time to go back and make sure all the images are sized appropriately. All of them are optimized. All of them have been ran through short pixel. Because when you look at any of those tests and start looking at the the sizes of everything on your website, generally it's well, video or images, most of the time it's going to be images. They're using the bulk of all the size. So if you can really do well on your images, your, your website loads so much quicker. So it's true. It is. I've actually, um, in some cases, just to get a general idea of like, okay, like, you know, this is sort of the layout that I'm going in. I'll take a, um, a screen cap, like of just like a part of the screen, um, and kind of go off of that. So I'll just mm -hmm. like, I'll highlight that that area that I want to fill and say, okay, so on my screen, it's, it's this many pixels by this many pixels and like kind of kind of do the math that way. But I'm sure that's a, not a great way to do it. Yeah, there is a browser extension. Um, what do I have? It's called Measure It. Um, and I'm sure there's others. That's the one I have installed inside. It's a Chrome extension. I have it in the edge. Uh, but it allow if you click on it, then you can measure stuff on your screen and it'll tell you how many pixels wide it is. So that would be helpful. That would at least save you a step of having to like take a screenshot and then measure it. You know what I mean? Like you could you could save a step if you use something like that. Right, right. All right, enough image talk. That's it. But yeah, if anybody has any uh, anything to add to that or how they might do that differently, I'm open to a better process on all that. So yeah, for sure. uh, you can leave comments here in the live stream if you'd like, and we'll try to get to them. But uh, all right, Matt, what are you bringing to the table today? So I'm bringing uh, two complete opposite things that, I mean, two different outcomes, opposite outcomes from the same, like, sort of, uh, like, this is what happened scenario um, that actually both happened within a month of each other. Um, I think they were both last month or, you know, they were both within 30 days. Um, so I'm sure that most people out there, if you've been doing this long enough, you've, uh, you've had a client, you know, you you've gone through all the onboarding, you've built the site, you're waiting for maybe a couple of images, a couple uh, paragraphs of copy, that's all you need to launch the site. And the client disappears, they go into the, the nether realms, and just, that's it, they're gone. Um, so I had two clients that did that to me recently. Um, one of them, one of which, like, I, I, I totally understand it's, it was the beginning of, uh, this year, like right when everything was going crazy and nobody knew what was going on and like how things were going to, you know, shape up. And they kind of went, they went silent. They had been going silent like before this, but I think that was probably the tipping point where they were just like, yep, not, not doing anything right now. This is not a priority anymore. Exactly. So we, um, this was, this was actually a website by committee as well, which, Everybody knows what it's like uh, working with those folks because everybody needs to put in their own input and, you know, feelings get hurt and, and all of that. So um, we've we went through this site. I think we had I can't off the top of my head, maybe like four different five different revisions um, on multiple pages. Um, they didn't really know what they wanted. It was one of those difficult clients that if they don't know what you want or what they want, it's really hard to deliver something that. Right. They're going to be know happy when with. I see it. What's that? <laughs> Somebody posted, uh, <laughs> they wanted to add, I'll know it when I see it to like the red flag thing. Oh man, that is such a huge red flag. So yeah, like that, that happened and I totally get it. You know, there's, there's, I think there was seven or eight people on this committee that all needed input. So it was really hard to please. Um, and then on the opposite side of the, uh, the spectrum, we had, um, this small like hardware shop that desperately needed to redo their site. Um, we got 
everything done. Um, and I think we needed like 12 very short, like descriptive pieces of copy for the, like a home page and one of the interior pages. Um, and then they went dark and they went dark two years ago, a long time ago. <laughs> and so I'd totally written them off. Anytime that something like this happens, I'll save everything. I put it on an external hard drive. You know, I, if they ever come back, I've got their stuff. We can start, uh, start up again. And that's exactly what happened. So I heard back from both of these, uh, these different businesses within, you know, about 30 days and the first one, the, the committee folks, they, um, they got back to me and they were like, let's start this thing up again. And I was like, that's cool. We like, I think they were waiting on, uh, sending me photos of their staff, like the, the about page staff section. That was it. The entire rest of the site was built. Um, they actually had paid me up to, um, like all the like billable working hours. So they were pretty much all in, um, aside from like the, the amount that it would cost to, to actually like launch the site. Basically, um, they came back to me and they were like moving in a different direction. Bye. Like, do we owe you anything else? And of course, I mean, they're already at a loss. I'm not going to charge them like, you know, the, the 600, $300 or however much it was to, uh, to like host and, and maintain and doing all of this over the last like six or seven months. Um, so they're gone. They, forfeited their deposit they forfeited like i that doesn't that it just blows my mind that and they didn't give any kind of like explanation as to why they were just walking nope. away. <laughs> no no reason why um just different direction so i wish them well i packaged up the uh like the notes and the sketches um like not the site files or anything or not like actual files but just the things that like we had discussed when they were trying to to formulate their vision um, packaged that all up, sent it over to him and said, like, you know, I wish you well. Um, I hope that, you know, you can find a develop developer that can realize your vision. Here's, you know, the notes that I, I had. And if that helps your, your future developer, awesome. Bye. I would love to ask them, what was it that you were looking for? But I don't think that they actually know. So I'm just going to keep tabs on the URL that they purchased and, <laughs> You know, like once a month or so, I'll go back, I'll check and see if anything's been launched because I'm super curious, you know, and yeah. if it's, if it's better than something that I can do, that's awesome. That's a learning opportunity. And I'll say, okay, so this is the way that they were describing it. This is what they were happy enough to launch with and try to like figure out how to read people a little bit more when it comes to right. uh, ambiguous descriptions. And if it's worse then. I can walk away feeling just, you know, content in what I do and what I, produ uh, what I produce. Now, the other folks, they had been gone for two years. Turns out that the guy, my primary uh, point of contact at that business, he was fired. Um, and I, he was a super nice guy, but I can kind of see why. He was all over the place. So like, you know, the, I remember the process through building the site. It was it was a lot of hand holding. It was a lot of uh, reminders and like, hey, we need this stuff. We need to get moving, et cetera, et cetera. So he he had gotten fired. They they realized, hey, we've got this site that, uh, again, pretty much completely paid for, um, and we just need a little bit. And the the uh, the owner, along with the uh, the person that replaced him, came back to me, called me up, and said, hey, I think we have a website, maybe <laughs> that's supposed to be launching. And I was like, yeah, two years ago. Um, so we got, we hopped on the phone, we talked about the site, um, and they were, they were lovely. Like these guys are absolutely awesome. They're super willing to work with me. Um, the only issue that I like really faced in, uh, in them coming back two years later is that these are completely new people. They haven't gone through the, the onboarding process. They don't know like how I work, like what's expected of them, all of the, the like, you know, the client training that the whole you would history do. history of the entire thing. Yeah. Exactly. So they start like, like sending off email after email. Uh, I think they sent me like 30 odd photos, um, all in like one attachment per email. So like right there, right in the beginning when they just first came back, I was like, oh no, this is going to be a nightmare. But after uh, after hopping on a, a Zoom call and like going over the the website in its current form, um, you know, screw, uh, sharing my screen, um, and then like also saying like, oh, by the way, 
this top portion of the the site is called the hero. Like, you know, if we refer to these mm-hmm. as sections and like trying to do that, that education, education at the same time, yeah. um, they were super, super okay with it. Um, and actually at the end of that call, they were, they were, su- they were really apologetic. Um, mainly like they were just, they were like, I'm, I'm, we're, we're sorry this has taken so long. We're sorry that we're sending like all of these uh, these emails and we're not like, you know, using WeTransfer or this, that and the other thing. Right. And because they're super nice and because like we have a, a two year old site that needs to launch and, and all of this stuff, like I, I totally get where they're coming from. I can't imagine stepping in on a, on a project that's that close to completion by somebody that wasn't a great employee and right. a lot of the information was wrong. So we had to swap that out and this, that, and the other thing, but, um, like it's moving forward and we should probably launch within a, a week or two. Um, but it's just, it's super, super different. You know, it's the same yeah. problem, but like the, the outcomes are, are vastly different. So I have a couple thoughts. So on the committee people I'm with you and I would love to know like what their committee meeting is that said, you know what, we'll just walk away from, X thousands of dollars. I mean, I'm assuming it was a multiple thousands of dollars project. Yeah, it was above my minimum, which is uh, like usually around 17 to 2,500 bucks. Okay. So they're walking away from a few thousand dollars with nothing. Yeah. With nothing. So I just wonder what I would love to know what has caused them to do that because uh, I've seen the site. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the most amazing website I've ever seen and there's nothing they could ever want better. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's no website we've even built. But I mean, I can't imagine why they wouldn't just like ask for some changes if they're unhappy or, you know, and it's not like you're the kind of person who's hard to get a hold of or doesn't return phone calls or, I mean, of course, maybe they just have a personality conflict and they don't really like you and that's fine. There's people we don't like, you know, Yeah, that's a possibility, but I mean, you're pretty easy to get along with. So I kind of doubt that. I mean, there's something definitely that was worth it to them to throw away all that money. I would really love to know what it is. But at this point, like if you ask them about it. I'm not going to open that can. It's not worth it. You're not going to get anything out of that, really. Mm -hmm. You've already gotten paid for the job. So, man, I'm kind of with you just wishing the best of luck and peek on it every once in a while to see see what comes of it because i'd love to know what happened like be a fly on the wall during that committee meeting exactly and And on on the other one mm -hmm. um the the one that you're happy about now i think this is a good um reminder for people to make sure they have a decent contract in place so if you can go to the adminbar.com forward slash contract you can pick up monster contracts by uh, nathan ingram which is something matt and i both use but this situation turned out okay and happy but this one could have been a total nightmare too that they come back and say like you know you still owe us a website uh you know i I don't want to be beholden to all these uh, you know, changes that the guy who doesn't even work here, uh, did, you know, Mm -hmm. your contract, a good contract in place would save you from a lot of pain in the ass in that, uh, cause people could be pretty shitty about it. So, uh, it worked out good for you. It sounds like these are good people, but, uh, that's definitely like that story made me a little nervous before you got to the end of it. Cause that could be a total nightmare to like, be at the finish line and have to start over unless your contract says and eh, that ain't happening especially two years later i'm not going to pick up your project again and start working on it you know yeah and i mean it's it's only fair to keep moving on it and the the solid contract just makes sure that it's fair for both parties you know like they're going to yep. get the site this is the scope of work that we agreed on um and because it had been two years um and and they were they were very nice there's, there's a little bit of balance there as well. Like I was, I was supposed to pretty much just place that, that last bit of copy and migrate the, uh, the site over to their servers and, and launch it. Like that's, that's it. But they came back with quite a few revisions. Um, one new page, um, yeah, I mean it's two years later. Right, exactly. Like new information. Yeah. They're the the products that they sell have like you know, they're they're very different. They don't carry some brands, they carry new brands now. So 
we did swap some of that stuff around as well. Currently, I'm waiting on uh, like the the updated copy. They're moving right along with that. I'll probably see the the remainder of it come in before the end of this week. Um, but just because the scope of work says I'm going to do these 12 paragraphs, launch the site, that's it. Anything else is additional. I mean, having a little bit of wiggle room with a client, and especially one that um, you feel at the end of all of this, you're going to have a care plan. That's going to be another like 75 to 150 or however much you 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 uh, you have um, for a care plan. You know, being being able to budge and pivot a little bit on that sometimes like really benefits both of you. Um, so the copy stuff, as long as it doesn't change the layout of the page, I'm doing that on the house. Like whatever they're writing it, it's a copy paste job. Right. Um, I'm not going to charge them for that. Really, the only thing that I'm charging for is if the cha- if the the page layout changes and I have to like restructure things, or we're adding a new page, swapping out images, swapping out copy, all of that stuff. I'm just going to do it because they're already under enough stress. They feel bad, you know, right. like I don't want them working with me feeling like I'm frustrated. Like that's, that's what they yeah. said. It's like, we're so sorry to be a pain and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, this is my job. You guys are nice. You know, like we're going to help each other out. And then hopefully for the next year or two years or however long, they're going to continue to pay me that care plan and we'll have right. a good working relationship. And that's just goes to, you know, man, you, you can get so much better deals and better things if you're just not a dick. It's like, so true. Quit being a dick to people. I will break so many of my rules for clients that I like. You know, yeah, like um, absolutely. One of my very favorite clients. Um, they run a uh, a small inn, and they're they're not doing too great this uh, this time this year. Um, I mean, hospitality industry right now is is definitely suffering. Um, so, man, I did free work for them, you know, and I let them know. I invoiced them like what it was going to be, you know, and they're used to like th- an ad cost this much roughly. Right. Like they know what to expect when they reach out and, and ask for more work. But this last ad that I did, it was pretty minimal. It was small. It was actually recycling an old one. I think it took me 15, 20 minutes to do. I'm not going to charge them for it. I sent the invoice and I just marked it off and I said, you know, everybody's struggling right now. So, yeah. you know, like it, it's doing stuff like that. It's just, it bolsters that relationship. And this conversation is definitely different than what, uh, what I came in on, but, uh, like, I don't know, like nurturing client relationships, I think is incredibly important. Yep. Go listen to episode two of the nurture flow podcast where Matt Davies talks about nurturing, how important nurturing is. Bingo. There you go. Plug for Matt Davies. It wouldn't be a complete episode <laughs> if we didn't bring him up. All right. Well, uh, I think we've used up about all of our time here. Is there anything we didn't get to that you wanted to make sure to mention? Mm, I don't think so. I think that uh, pretty much sums it up. I think actually this is the first time my new backgrounds. It's it's still mm. a work in, in progress. But, it's looking uh, much better. It's getting there. Yeah, slowly I'm picturing, but surely. I'm picturing back in your old place in your old apartment. <laughs> like we need to do a side by side of what it looked like then and what it looks like now it's a it's it's a huge improvement i like the artwork i like your little twisty lamp couch you got it it's looking good that, that couch by the way is it, it's a rock it is made of granite it is not comfortable <laughs> in the least um it was the nicest looking cheap thing that i could find um because it was bought just for this podcast's background nice <laughs> whoops yeah oh well you don't really want somebody to be sitting in your office staring from behind you anyway. So no, I mean, best that it's not comfortable. I'll sit on it when the, if there's something like a Facebook live or something. Um, and, or like, I want to watch a tutorial that's lengthy. Um, I'll hop back right. there and, and watch it on the screen, but otherwise no, it doesn't get any use. Man, oh man. I will, uh, I will mention if, uh, you want to save 20% on docket WP, our coupon code launch special, uh, expires tomorrow, Thursday, the 24th. Uh, so after that, you won't be able to save 20% anymore. Uh, don't come crying to me. No, you can come crying to me. I'll probably figure out something, but it does expire tomorrow. It won't work. You can use the coupon code launch special and save 20%. All right. So that's, uh, that's all I got today. Yes, indeedy. 
All right, guys. Well, if the admin bar helps you in any way, the best way to help us is to like and share our content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, we have a YouTube channel and this podcast and use our our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye.